following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today. We're broadcasting on 94.1 FM WNBU, as well as cable TV 10 in New Bern, North Carolina. Some of you may be listening or watching or streaming through our website, www.dlblaine.com, and we welcome you as well. If you have any comments or questions on the show and you're on the website, just hit the uh, Contact Us button. Uh, you can also email us directly at allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. And, of course, you can always give us a call. The phone number is 252 Six three three zero one zero seven. Uh, we really like to hear from our viewers and listeners, and any comments you may have, uh, things you'd like us to cover on the show, uh, we'll be happy to take a look at those and try to work them in. Uh, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, something I came across. This was uh, from the SEC Securities and Exchange Commission. They're the regulators of investment advisors like myself and my firm. And they published a list um, that was rebroadcast through CNBC about 10 things you should know about your financial advisor. And as I was going through this list, I thought, you know, this is some, some good information and, and I need to cover this and kind of put our own twist on it and how my firm um, takes a look at these questions. You know, and it started me thinking when I started my company uh, 13, 14 years ago, a lot of it was because I myself was a consumer. You know, I was an investor. I, I needed tax help. I needed insurance help. I needed estate help. And, and I couldn't find uh, people out there that I thought uh, were trustworthy or knew what they were doing. There was just so many people claiming to be financial advisors, and it was just very confusing. And so I said, well, number one, I'm going to learn about this myself. And basically self-taught, went back along the way and got some certifications, but uh, basically learned the industry, uh, you know, finance myself. And then I said, well, I'm going to set up a company that's designed to give people objective advice. We don't work for another company. We don't sell any product. We don't we try to minimize those conflicts of interest. And that's kind of how I started. And so I thought this list would be, kind of a good thing to cover. We've been talking a lot the past several weeks about the Federal Reserve, some really heavy type topics. I thought we'd light it up this little this week. So number one thing to remember is they're not all pros. And unlike when you go to say the doctor and you know if, if the person is in fact has a medical license to practice in the state, you can be pretty much assured that, you know, they went to medical school, they did a residency, they did an internship, you know, they maybe passed the boards, if they're board certified in a specific area. You know, they're very defined career paths. So when that person is sitting there, you're on the operating table, and he has the scalpel, you pretty much know the path that he took. Now, just like any profession, you know, there are frauds and there are different things. I know there's some I can't remember the name. I watched a movie one time where this um, young guy just basically had studied and, and you know was in, uh, an imposter and he was a doctor. But anyway, the point is you you pretty much know who's sitting in front of you. Um, anyone anyone can call themselves a financial planner. And in fact, if you don't uh, have more than so many clients. Uh, you don't even have to be registered or certified or anything, but this does not mean that they are an expert in, in anything. Um, so what we want to do is we want to look for experience and credentials, and we'll talk about a few of those. Um, I am a CFA. A CFA is a Chartered Financial Analyst. It's uh, the only globally recognized um, designation for investment professionals. It's a three-year course. It takes three years to obtain the certification. It's very rigorous. Um, the pass rates for the first year usually hover around 25, 30 percent and, um, and only go up to around 40 percent in the subsequent years. So you, a very 
small minority of people that ever start the program even pass it. It's akin to what I call a sort of a PhD in investing. Um, that's the CFA, Chartered Financial Analyst. Another good designation if you're looking for a holistic planner, the Certified Financial Planner, or CFP. They have, they're required to take different classes in insurance and investing, uh, retirement planning, estate planning, things like that. It's a good, broad background for uh, a financial planner. It's sort of a minimum standard that someone should have um, you know, CFA, CFP. There's another uh, designation we happen to have in our firm, uh, a, a man who is a CPA, Certified Public Accountant. And if you're a CPA, you can specialize in different things. One of the things that kind of makes me chuckle is people, um, my, my brother's an accountant, and people are always asking him tax questions. They say, oh, well, what about this? He knows nothing about taxes. He is a CFO of a company, and he doesn't deal with individual income taxes. He doesn't know anything about it. And same thing in the CPA. You have some that specialize in audit. You have some that specialize in tax. Well, there's also what's called a PFS, Personal Financial Specialist. It's a division of the AICPA, the um, CPA Association, that uh, these CPAs have chosen to specialize in personal financial uh, specialties. So it's a CPA slash PFS. They specialize in personal financial planning. There's also, um, we have a gentleman in our firm who's also an enrolled agent, an EA. An EA is a specialist in tax. They uh, take an uh, examination administered by the IRS, and they're allowed to practice in uh, tax court, just like a tax attorney or CPA. So that's an enrolled agent. And so those, those are some of the certification you want to look for. The CFA, Chartered Financial Analyst, like myself, is an expert in investments, all type of investments, stocks, bonds, private equity, real estate. Um, part of the um, course covers financial statement analysis, you know, accounting, big corporate accounting, uh, quantitative methods and analysis, um, you know, using uh, mathematical models and, and testing and um, things like that, chartered financial analysts. The CFP, Certified Financial Planner, looks at a holistic view of retirement planning, tax planning, estate planning, things like that. Then you have the CPA with a PFS, Personal Financial Specialty, who specializes in individual financial planning type issues. So these are some things that you want to look for, some credentials. You also want to look at experience. Nothing wrong with a young person just got out of college. A lot of them get out of college with a degree in financial planning now with maybe a CFP. Nothing wrong with that. But we want to see some experience. We want to see some credentials because, remember, anyone can call themselves a financial planner. We're coming up on a first break. We'll continue talking about 10 things you should know about your financial advisor.